A small federal agency has launched an initiative to strengthen a highly specialized class of museums in the United States. The Institute of Museum and Library Services is taking in internship applications from American Latino museums to, in its words, strengthen their institutional capacity. Here with details of the program, the Institute's Deputy Director for Museum Services, Laura Huerta Migas. Ms. Migas, good to have you with us. Great to be with you, Tom. And I have to begin with the Institute of Museum and Library Services. In 16 and a half years of hosting this show, I don't think this agency has ever been on. And I like to kid people. I know everything there is to know about the federal government, but I don't know about this institute. So let's begin with what the institute is all about, because I suspect there are other feds that don't know. You're not the first one to be hearing about us for the first time, but we're hoping that's going to be a rarer occurrence as we move forward. IMLS, the Institute of Museum and Library Services, is an independent executive branch agency. We consider ourselves one of the three sister cultural agencies, along with the National Endowment for the Arts and the National Endowment for the Humanities. We are the federal government's largest funder of libraries and museums and function primarily as a grant-making agency. And you also have an external board drawn from people that are operating in museums and libraries, which is a little bit unusual. That's correct. We do have a presidentially appointed board, the National Museum and Library Services Board, that is made up of 20 to 22, depending on the time of year, representatives and leaders from the library and museum sectors. And the grant making that you do, what's the rough total that goes out every year? So right now, our appropriations are right around $257 million a year to the nation's libraries and museums. About two-thirds of our funding goes out through our grants to states programs that funds libraries, public libraries, primarily at the state level. And then the balance of our funding is disseminated through competitive grant programs. And about 53 million of those dollars are dedicated to museum competitive grant programs. And looking at museums in the United States, is it fair to say that they are becoming more specialized or that more specialized focused museums are springing up? I mean, that's what I see from what I read, but you tell me what the trends are. Sure. I might say that museums are becoming much more community focused and really the services in IMLS, Museum and Library Services, is really referring to the fact that our agency funds that public service function of both museums and libraries. And so what we are seeing is that there are more museums that are really coming up from the grassroots that are community established, community curated, and are often telling the stories of specific communities. And when I say communities, that's a really broad term. Sometimes it's a neighborhood. And sometimes it is, again, based in specific cultural heritages as well. Interesting. So is one of the challenges of these museums then to get people not from the neighborhood to stop in and take a look? I would say yes to that. And, you know, most people don't know that the United States is actually very unique in the world that we have community-based museums. In most other countries, museums are government entities, you know, they're funded by states, by the federal government, and their content is really curated that way as well. And the United States museum community is quite different and quite localized. And so it makes for a really rich marketplace, but it means that the ways of supporting those museums is also really distributed and diverse. And that presents both opportunities and challenges for these institutions. And there are privately owned museums that are open to the public. Are those sometimes eligible for federal grants? Actually, not in our program. So IMLS only funds nonprofit museums that are open to the public at least 120 days a year. And nonprofit can include 501c3, independent institutions, as well as museums that are on college campuses or even parts of other types of agencies and organizations like hospitals, et cetera. Must be nonprofit. It could be in private hands, but nonprofit. Correct. 
We are speaking with Laura Huerta Migas, Deputy Director for Museum Services at the Institute of Museum and Library Services. And let's get to the program now where you are looking at internships and fellowships for those from Latino museums. Tell us more about what's going on. So this new program, whose acronym is ALMIFI, the American Latino Museum Internship and Fellowship Initiative, is our first standalone funding program out of a brand new appropriation we received as part of the establishment of the National Museum of the American Latino in 2020. And as part of the establishment of that museum in the legislation, there is a section that creates a new grant program to support American Latino museums. And this actually follows a pattern started with the establishment of the National Museum of African American History and Culture, which also created a similar grant program to support African American focused museums here at IMLS. All right. And this sounds like fellowships, internships, doesn't sound like grants. So what is the actual program designed to do here? Thank you so much for that question. Yes, we are not funding individual fellowships and internships. What we are funding in this grant program are actually partnerships between universities and museums to create fellowships and internships that are focused on Latino studies, American studies, to really help build that pipeline and workforce that has expertise in sharing, preserving, and educating around the contributions of Latinos to the American story. Because the release mentions the increase in capacity of these museums. So it sounds like an increase in the human capital capacity of museums. That's correct. The grassroots nature of many of these institutions means that they are not often able to access or have visibility as a future employer to students and scholars that are creating these careers and expertise in Latino culture. And so we really see this program as a way to accelerate the connections and the career pipeline between these institutions and then the students that universities are supporting in these studies. So the grants would go to these smaller institutions who would then create fellowships and internships for people studying Latino culture. That's correct. And all of the internships and fellowships that are established as part of these programs are paid internships and fellowships. This is part of the requirements of the grant program so that it really is setting up a trajectory for real employment. And it gives the institutions time to really understand and flex so that they're ready to support those future professionals. And do you monitor how the museums, such as the Latino museums or any kind of specialized community museums, to ensure that they have some reasonable way of displaying things in a way that is historically accurate, that honors what happened in reality, but on the other hand is viewable and digestible by everybody? So I would say that there's yes and no. Our grantees are all required to provide regular reporting to us throughout the life of their grant. But as a grant maker, IMLS is not an editor of the content. However, in this program, we also do strongly encourage that they include an external evaluator throughout the program that is helping to serve as that third-party reflector on the success and the challenge of implementation of the program. Right, because you can present history, for example, in terms of verbs of what people did, but you can leave the adverbs out and let people judge for themselves. Yeah, and that's really part of the learning process as we learn about how to bring scholarship from the university um, and from a really sometimes theoretical environment to translating that for public education and knowledge. And we really see that as a really important place for building capacity and, again, giving the opportunity for emerging professionals 
to learn that side by side with the leaders of these community based institutions that have really been the stewards of these very important life experiences and histories. And can these grant 